Thanks for attending uh, today's webinar. I'm Matt Champagne. Uh, and as I told you uh, earlier, when you registered for this webinar, that the training would start at that moment. And it has, because about half of you took me up on that offer that once you registered for this webinar, you clicked a button, you were going to give a couple of answers, and then I was going to close the loop. I was going to respond to what you had to say. And that is so important because that is stage one of tonight's training. We're going to talk a lot about sideways survey and how to apply it to your webinars. But it was great that you clicked that button, that you gave some responses, because I'm going to show you how that fits in with sideways survey tonight. So as I said, the training's already started. When you logged in for this webinar registered, you came to a page that looked something like this, right? You can see my action fingers. I'm in my video. I'm saying, hey, click this button below, uh, share your feedback, and I will close the loop. And you click that button. About a uh, little more than half of those that registered clicked the button. And then you saw something look like this. This was the actual start of a survey. And then you responded. And I said I was going to close the loop. And hopefully you got those emails. That was part of the technique. As the webinar approached, I was going through the results and sharing them with you to let you know what other people said, to prove to you that your voice was heard, that what you said made a difference, and how you compared to others. So let me share uh, some of the results that have come in since then. I've updated these numbers uh, since my last email message. Uh, the numbers are about the same for those that have never produced a webinar. So the question was, how many webinars have you produced or hosted? A little more than half said never. This, they're still waiting for their first one. About 8% said they've done one. They're kind of iffy on whether they're going to do a second one. About 20% of you have had some experience. You've done between two and 10 webinars. About 13% of you out there attending tonight are very experienced up to 50 webinars that you've managed or produced, and about 8% of you are over the top experience. There's two people that said, I've done hundreds, which is amazing. I've been doing webinars since 2002, I think was my first webinar. I might have done a hundred and some, but definitely not hundreds. So there's a couple of you out there at least that have more experience than me. And I just want to let you know this, that we have this huge range of experience on today's call. We have Half who have never done a webinar waiting to kind of kickstart it to those that have done hundreds. So I've tailored this training to everybody. So I have something to say to each of you, something that you'll take away from tonight's training. A second question on that survey was, what do you do? Who do you help? Kind of what's your superpower? 31% of you reported that you're a coach or a mentor. We have coaches here tonight who are coaches of artists and team coaches and wealth enrichment uh, coaches, family coaches, and about 17% of you said that you do training, you conduct training. Uh, but that's not all. That's a little bit more than half. So you're, you're a little under half. So you're definitely in good company. But there was a lot of specific responses. When I asked who you are, one person said I sell rental equipment. Another, I help under, people understand Bitcoin. Another helps with tech phobia. Another helps borrowers pay off their mortgage. So there was this whole range of uh, talents and experiences out there, a lot of superpowers. So I've kind of come up with some examples, I think that will touch on a few of what you do, but this training is definitely for everybody. It's not just for those of you who are coaches and mentors and trainers, but for everyone. That's how it's been designed. And the final question was asking, what could really make an impact on you tonight? What would really make it worth your time? We're gonna spend about 25 minutes tonight on the training and for those of you, I'm going to call you rookies, those of you who have never done a webinar before, you said things a little bit different than, than the more experienced folks. For the rookies, a lot of your responses about why you're here tonight had to do with uh, making an impact. You want to do things right, right from the beginning, not make all those rookie kinds of mistakes, that you wanted some confidence, some motivation. One person said to take the intimidation factor out, and we're going to do that tonight. And many more said they want to just bring in, have better show up rates, bring in more people. And we're definitely going to tackle all that this evening. But those of you that were more experienced, I looked at your results separately, and you had some different things to say. Some of you said you want to uh, improve your conversion rates, get more sales, of course, more clients. One person said, I want you to challenge my current thinking. And I love that. I put that in quotes because that's exactly what's going to happen here. I'm going to present some mindsets, some ideas I don't think you've heard before. It's not, nothing new, 
Uh, it's very common in other industries, but it's new, I think, to the online marketing folks, you'll see. And somebody else wrote, make it irresistible for people not to join me. I love that, and that's what we're gonna accomplish here tonight as well. But given, no matter what you said, why you're here, what impact this will have, there's a reason we're all here, right? We're all here to learn, uh, to get some additional training, to, to get some new advice. And one of those reasons is we have a mission, right? We're on this earth to do something. We have certain skills and experiences, talents, backgrounds. We know something that other people don't. We have a solution, a technique, a method, a formula that we wanna share with people. We wanna find those people and say, look, I've discovered something that could help you. So we wanna help people, we wanna solve their problems, we're trying to find those people whose problems we can solve. And when we solve those problems, they're gonna pay us. So I think we're all here for that as well, although nobody stated in quite that, that sense. But I blocked out the unique solution because what's happening and the whole the point of tonight's talk is this is what you need to do. You need to get your message out to the world. But what's happening is your message is getting smothered. It's getting smothered by the sameness, by the monotony, by what the gurus have been doing for 10 and 12 years, the same tactics over and over. We know them, right? The high pressure sales tactics, the scarcity, the urgency, all the messaging looks the same and our message is getting drowned out. And that's what we're gonna solve tonight. I'm gonna show you at seven stages in your webinar, how to do something to get attention and engagement and really make a difference to uncover, to unsmother, if that's a word, your message so you can get your solution out to the world. So I was gonna tell you my story here. I have a story I usually tell about uh, my training. It's, it's, it's a little bit different. I'm, a, I'm trained as a mathematical psychologist. I'm a researcher and a scientist. So it's, it's very different from a lot of uh, presentations I see. But the real story tonight is I just took this snapshot from my phone four hours ago. This is uh, Hurricane Michael <laughs> has just hit the coast four hours ago in Florida. That blue dot you see on the screen above Atlanta, that's me. And uh, it's now four hours later, and that is now over top of us. I'm watching the rain coming down and the wind blowing. Uh, so there's no time for stories here. But I also tell you this in case like my screen goes dark, you'll know uh, Hurricane Michael uh, got to me here. Um, but I will take one slide just to say something about myself. Everything that I'm presenting today is based on my 25 years of, of a career. I've gathered about 6 million data points over the last 25 years from 7,000 surveys that I've administered to about 550 organizations around the world. A lot of them you would know, big companies, FedEx and General Motors and Harley Davidson. A lot, most of them you wouldn't know, just small training organizations, small businesses, but continuing to validate this method uh, pulled from psychology based on my own research, based on that of my colleagues, based on psychologists in general, to keep refining and refining. I've been doing that for an entire career. All the research that I've done has been published. It's about 44 journals at this point. And this research, um, <laughs> I see a little message there. Oh, I have a little, oh, I'm sorry. Um, let me introduce, I'm, let's, let me introduce you in just one moment here. Thanks for the, for the note. Yeah, I was just gonna conclude by saying that all this research that I've published is, is in public domain. You can find it in books and journals elsewhere. And to do this sort of research is pretty expensive. I've gotten a lot of funding uh, from federal agencies and, and philanthropic groups that have the same question that I had. How do you retain people? How do you bring an audience in? How do you keep them focused on you? How do you keep your students and your members and your clients, how do you keep them focused on you forever? That's the name of my podcast, Keep Your Customers Forever. And that's what this research is all about. And that's what tonight's training is going to give you. So uh, let me bring in Leslie. I'm sorry. This is uh, Leslie who's managing our uh, webinar tonight. I don't know if your yep. video is available Hi. there. Hi, everyone. I'm Leslie. Uh, I'm going to be helping out with, um, with Matt managing the webinar. So if you have any questions, be sure to um, put them in the Q&A and I will answer them. Or if it's a really good one and we want Matt to answer it live, we all let him know. Terrific. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, just feel free to jump in if uh, as questions come up and I'll be happy to address those over the next uh, 20 minutes or so. 
All right, sounds good. <laughs> All right, thanks, Leslie. Uh, I put this on the screen here. Uh, most of you know Tom Poland. Uh, I met Tom a couple of years ago at at a mastermind, and just you know, I was just on his uh, uh, podcast a couple of weeks ago, and he introduced me in this way. He said, uh, "What I have to tell you: this nine principles of customer feedback, this research that comes from psychology." He called it the missing link, the missing link between marketing and keeping, the evolution of marketing and keeping customers happy. I thought that was so clever coming off the top of his head there. I thought I'd, I'd uh, put that in there as well. So that's what I hope this will be for you, the missing link between marketing and keeping clients happy. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna talk now about the seven stages of your webinar. And this is just according to Matt, you know, I don't know who else uses stages, but I'm going to talk about each stage of your webinar and point out that there is a, a critical objective that must be made at each one of these stages or your webinar fails. And here's the objectives. So reading from left to right, when you get, want to get people registered, it's critical that you get their attention, right? If you don't get their attention, it's a fail. And when you are in the, in the webinar, if you don't keep people engaged, it's a fail. So I'm going to show you at each of these seven stages what you can apply to meet this critical objective. And we're going to go through these one at a time. I'll tell you the objective, but I'm also going to point out what I call the, uh, the moldy old predictable practice. I'm going to show you everything that is, has been taught, and it's stuff that used to work. I mean, it's stuff that I used you know, in 2002. It was stuff that I've used for years. So I'm not going to be critical of anyone who uses these practices. I don't want you to take it that way. But I am critical of the folks who are teaching it because they know it's not working. The gurus who have been teaching this same techniques, what I call the moldy old predictable tactics, they've been teaching them for years and they know they're failing. Amongst themselves, they're looking for answers. Why aren't, they, why aren't we getting the conversions we used to do? used to get? Why aren't we getting the sales that we used to get? It's their tactics. They haven't changed their tactics in years. Things change, but these tactics remain the same. That's why they're failing. So I'm going to give an example of what I'm calling the failing practice. There are also things that make you not feel so good. I call them the high pressure sales tactics. A lot of people use these you know, the scarcity and the urgency and the, and the high pressure it doesn't feel right. And there's a deep psychological reason why it doesn't. We don't have time to talk about that tonight, but I'm always interested in the uh, psychology side. Then for each of these, I'm going to introduce what I call the scientific practice. This is rock solid findings from psychology that I call them, it's simply cause and effect. You do this in psychology and people react this way. If this isn't anything new, like I've been applying these same tactics in uh, Fortune 500 companies and in universities for years. But after I left the university, after I sold my business and I came to online marketing, I was just astonished that nobody uses these because they're standard practice elsewhere. So that's why I say they're hidden from the gurus. It just uses good, solid science, good, solid data, and it needs to be used here as well. So that's what I feel like I'm the messenger from another industry where things have have gone well for years and bringing it to you. So let's hop right in. Stage one, you need to get attention. That is the objective. And if you ask the gurus, well, gurus, how do you get people's attention? They'd give you the same old stuff, right? You'd, uh, you log in, you register for the webinar, you get some automated confirm, uh, you might get a workbook, that sort of thing. Everyone's done the same thing for so long. People aren't paying. That's why you're only getting 20% of people to show up for your webinar. That's actually pretty good to get 20% to show up. People know the routine. So you need to change this up. Here's the scientific practice. And you know it because you participated. And that was my goal in having you answer those questions is now you see sideways survey, the process I'm teaching you here from stage one, We're able to gather some deep insights about you and then be able to respond to what you had to say. So when you signed up for the webinar, you saw something like this, a, a, a registration page, you clicked on it, there was me, you clicked on start. Different, right? That got a lot, something, I usually get about 70, 72% of people to click on that button. 
not bad for a survey, right? People clicking on the button, you got their attention. This is different. It's a purple cow, Seth Godin, a purple cow stands out. And that was the only objective for stage one was to get people's attention so that they would take notice. Let's go to stage two. The purpose of stage two is building anticipation. Your webinar hasn't started yet, but you need to keep reminding people. Well, what always happens? The same thing the gurus have taught for years. Just keep sending reminders. Hey, webinar starts tomorrow, be there. Webinar starts in eight hours, be there. Webinar starts in an hour, be there. Just keep hammering. And they're built into the tools. Even for this webinar, I couldn't block it from giving a couple extra reminders because they're built into the systems. Everybody does that. You need something different. We've, they've already heard what you had to say. It's a little bit annoying, right? That, that doesn't happen in real world, right? Like you make an appointment with your dentist. Your doesn't, dentist doesn't call you up and say, hey, Leslie, uh, your appointment's tomorrow. I'll see you then. Hey, Leslie, your appointment's in six hours. We'll see you. Hey, Leslie, that appointment, two hours. Hope you can make it. You know, you think that was a little strange, but the guru would say, oh, yes, this is what we must do online. No, it, it's not. Let's use a little science a little psychology instead. For this webinar, you receive something that looked like, this. I know this is a lot of text, but this is actually a message that I sent back to you. Uh, some of you received it today, some the day before, depending on when you registered. But I was calculating the responses and I was able to send back to you, say, thanks for registering. Here's who's gonna be on the call with you. Here's the stage they are in their business or here's what they're looking for. You're able to close the loop demonstrate to your people that you heard what they had to say and share the results. That's what people really want. They want knowledge of results. Know that when they take their time to answer your questions, that you listened and you demonstrated this. Very powerful. That's what brings uh, people in. I promised in this webinar to give you 41% a higher attendance, and that's what we're getting. We've done this process to about 18 webinars just this uh, past year alone. And that's about the average show up rate increase using this sort of method, the scientific practice. And this is what's gonna get attention and this is what can get people anticipation to show up for your webinar. Stage three, engagement. When that camera turns on, we're standing right here. You gotta keep people engaged. What do the gurus tell you? the same tired things that they have used, same stuff I was using in 2002. Again, most of you have probably used these techniques, so I'm not being critical of you, because I used them myself. I'm being critical of the gurus who continue to teach these. So let's go through these one at a time, because I think you'll recognize each of these. The, uh, the first technique I call the, the here I am method. And it goes like this, right? The camera turns on, you're on a webinar, and what is, what's the first thing the uh, trainer says to you? All right, everybody, I want you to put away all your stuff, close your browsers, shut, sh shut off your cell phone. I want all eyes up here. Everyone focus on me because what I'm saying is so important. And I hear this. I'm like, did you just tell me to shut off my phone? I don't know. That, that's, that's not what I would do. Let me give you an alternative. A good psychology practice is what I call the there you are, not the here I am. There you are. And it works like this. Since I've already asked you a question when you registered, then I shared the results with you. I said, here's what you said and here's what others said. If we had more time, I would ask another question before the webinar and then I would share the results. So when that camera turns on, I don't have to say, here I am. The audience is saying, there you are. There you are, Doc. So nice to see you. We've been having this conversation. It just adds a new element to your webinars themselves. Another technique that's used universally, again, I'm not critical if you use it, I've used it myself, but you need to stop this approach. And that's the, where's everybody from? Camera comes on and the host, after telling you to focus and, and how important your time is and you need to pay attention, then starts asking, hey, where's everybody from? Why don't you type in the comment box? Okay, yep, any minute now. Oh yeah, there's a, a Graham from Castaways Beach, Australia. Oh, great to see you. What about your people watching this on a replay? You just told them how important it is to focus and now they're just sitting, now they're tuned out. You've lost the objective. The objective is to engage. 
you need to get right into it. You want to offer people a customized experience that is gained by asking questions while it still matters. When do you ask questions of your audience? Before the event, not during the event. Another, a third one here, uh, and again, this is one that people have used. This is something I used in 2002, 2003. It's the old quizzes and polls. So right in the middle of your webinar, right while things are moving right along, you just stop things dead. The motivate, you know, everything just stops and you go, all right, let's, uh, let's put up a, a quiz question. How many of you are this, yes or no? Again, your people watching the replay, they're gone. Like, why would, they, why would they, they sit around? And the people in the audience are not filling these out like they used to. When I used to do this uh, 10, 10, 12, 13 years ago, I, I think now, you might get most everybody to fill it out. Now, not many people are paying attention because it's unnecessary. If you would use a good psychology practice, you would be asking the questions before the event starts. So you want you, if you're telling people that their time is valuable and then you stop it with some quizzes and polls, it just makes it inconsistent. It just, that, that's not really where you want to be. You want to be asking the questions before the webinar. So when that camera turns on, I'm able to say, Hey, 50.6% of you have never done a webinar. 8.3% of you have done one webinar. I already know all this information. I know that somebody, uh, is an IT support. I know a little bit about your background. It's not like I know you, but I don't ask during the webinar, I ask before. And I put some dollar signs next to this one because this is where it pays off. We've gathered data now uh, the past 16 months, getting about 41% more attendees and about 22% higher engagement using the good psychology practice. Something that you might want to incorporate into your webinars as well. Stage four, the cart is open, it's time to buy. What do the gurus say? Well, we all know it, right? We, I call it the relentless email storm because you do a webinar, you tell people about some solution you have, and then you present the solution hoping that it, it works for people, but it won't work for most, right? Very few people it will work for. Then the question is, you know, what do you do next? Well, the gurus would say, just keep sending an email. Hey, the cart closes in four days, buy my stuff. Cart closes in two days, buy my stuff. Cart closes tomorrow, buy my stuff. That's not the, that's not what I want to do to the folks that I'm meeting, especially for the first time, to be, you know, that guy that hammers people into buying. I mean, this doesn't happen in real life, right? I mean, you don't go into a, a camping store and you're looking at some gear and you put it down and a salesperson rushes over and says, hey, that we close at 10 o'clock. You got to buy that now. Look, I've got six people that have also bought that. They love it. You got to buy this right now. We close at 10. You could buy it tomorrow, but it's going to cost you twice as much. You got to, you know, that, that, wouldn't, that doesn't happen in real life. But the gurus would say, oh, yes, but this is how we must treat people online. I'm saying, no, we need to treat people with some good psychology apply the same principles that I'm talking about here, asking the right questions in the right way, getting some information, and then closing the loop, sharing that with your audience. So it's always sharing something, then an ask. So before the cart uh, closes, I'm able to share and say, thanks for attending the webinar. I heard this, or before the webinar, I'd asked how many people are in this area, what stage your business in. There's some certain questions I would ask. Then I share that with the audience. And the response you get is, wow, the webinar is over, but I'm still learning something from the webinar. We're still having this conversation. I call it the survey conversation. And you're able, I'm able to send out half as many emails and get a far greater open rate because it's not the relentless email storm with more and more uh, urgent subject headings. Each time it's a share and then an ask. And that's what Sideways Survey is all about. That's stage four. Stage five, the card is closed. And the objective now is discovery. Most people aren't going to buy what you're selling on the webinar. So the question is, you know, what, you know, what, what else do I have? Do I have something else that I can offer? Is there somebody I know that can help this person? The failing practice is the, uh, the trickeration, right? Here comes 
the little strategies that we all know. We all know these, these tricks. They're, uh, they'll say, oh, yeah, maybe you couldn't afford that payment on what I was selling, so let me make it even more, but I'll split it into three payments. Or let me upsell. Or, oh, the servers crashed just at the time cart closed, so we reopened them. You still got a chance to buy. You know, and people are thinking, you know, no means no. You're, you're, you're being that guy now with these sorts of tactics. Let me give you something different some psychology, some good psychology, some good science. You just continue the conversation. You need not use some of these tactics, the high pressure sales tactics. You simply ask another question. Yes, the right question in the right way. People will continue to respond. You share those results with them. Hey, isn't that interesting? You're just like this other person. Here is the top five most interesting things I heard. Here are the four things that people said they were going to apply directly after this webinar. You're continuing to give, continuing to share results, and that's something different. You're, getting their, you're doing something nobody else does. You're getting, keeping their attention. You're keeping them focused on you, and it's just continuing this process of engagement. Uh, something that they'll be able to tell others about. And that's the kind of person uh, that we want to be, right? Stage six, the, uh, it's all about retention now, right? Because they didn't respond to your offer. They didn't buy what you had, had to sell. You're discovering something about them, but how do you keep them focused on you? How do you keep them in your audience? Because maybe you could give them something else that they could use. Maybe you can lead them to somebody else. What do the gurus say? Well, to me, this is one of the most interesting stats I've ever heard. This was kind of an eye-opener to me. The fact is, I talked to two uh, folks that were in the inner circle, in the marketing division of some gurus who do tons and tons of sales. And they said the same thing. They said 75% of the people who buy in that last hour before the cart closes want their money back in 30 days. But that's what the gurus say. The gurus say, oh, you gotta send three emails to your, to your non-buyers in, uh, you know, in that last day. And you gotta send one one hour prior. Well, I guess mission accomplished, they bought, but now 30 days later, they want their money back. And that's not good for anyone. Buyer's remorse, of course. Uh, what else do you do with those folks? The gurus would say, well, you just put them into your list, right? Just put them in your, just keep sending them your blogs. People are unsubscribing like crazy. That's the, that's the practice that's in place now. Maybe that worked five or six years ago. I wasn't there doing the gold rush of online marketing. Maybe anything worked then. It doesn't work today. What works is science. What works is the data proven methods, continuing to share and request, continue to ask questions of your audience, continue to share with them what others have to say. And what you're doing besides getting people to focus on you is you're building this huge database because now you're learning so much about your people. You're learning, learning what other products that they might uh, enjoy, products that they need and want. You don't have to ask them directly. You're already learning this through the questioning. And now you're getting this huge engagement and uh, retention levels. And it's all done from the same principles. People recognize that. They say, yes, this is what I want. I want to know that my voice was heard, that what I said made a difference, how I compare to others. Why would I leave this conversation? And they don't. And that's the key. So finally, stage seven is time for the long-term relationship building. This is where you want to be. This is what it all led up to is you brought people in, you've introduced them to your world, you've told them a little bit about yourself. They didn't buy what you had, but you wanna keep them in your orbit. And what do the gurus have to say? They don't know. Just, I'll just flat out say it. They don't know what to do. They'll, they'll say, well, they didn't buy, so maybe I should take all these names and I'll, I'll uh, give them to one of my partners. Maybe they can sell them some stuff. And your people are like, well, wait a minute, who's this partner? I didn't sign up with them, you know? I'm thinking of GDPR laws and things of that sort. There's no permission given for that sort of thing. And people start wandering off. And if you wanted to do another webinar, it's a matter of starting all over from scratch because your people have left. You don't want to be in that position to have to then start all over, you know, get your Facebook ads going again, get a whole new audience. 
You want to have been building relationships this whole time, and you can do it with the same practice, the same sideways survey technique that I've been talking about, because this is where it pays off in huge dividends, because now people are trusting you, and that's what it's all about, right? People don't buy from people they don't trust. And I don't hear the guru say that word trust much, but that's where it's at. If people trust you, they'll buy from you. And you've been sharing. You've been sharing other people's results, helping them along. It's starting to pay off huge. Your audience themselves now becomes your sales force. And you are now able to offer them more products, other services that you've created based on their feedbacks. So you're not only learning from them what you currently have that could help them, but other things you hadn't even thought about from your audience you've now learned from this feedback. That's where you want to be. Hey Matt, it's Leslie here. Hey, I have Leslie. some questions. Sure. So how is this different than, um, you know, ask method that Ryan Levesque does? You know, everyone's, it seems like all the gurus are on board with that. Can you explain a little bit how, how it's different than what you're teaching here? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Ryan Levesque, um, I think he's done a great job. I think his, his contribution will be that he got people to consider asking, getting feedback. Um, that's important. And a lot of people hadn't recognized that. So just that notion of gathering feedback from your members, your students, your clients, your customers, that was important. The ask method is effective within its, what it was designed to do. The ask method was, was built for prospecting. So you can put on your web page, uh, ask people questions like, are you this kind of person or that kind of person? Or if you're selling uh, on a golf clubs, you know, you ask some questions, you're just trying to define, you're, you're trying to uh, qualify your buyers. So it works well, I think. The problem is the ask method has been used now everywhere. And that's where it falls apart. Just like any tool, like a hammer is for hitting nails. But I could take this hammer and go scrape paint off my house. I could use it to go stir some cookie dough batter. It works. It wasn't meant to do that. And it's not very effective. There are other tools more effective. So it's not a criticism of the ask method. It was designed for this niche. But the problem is it's been extended far beyond it. And like any tool, it will, it will, it, it fails. Um, the tool I'm describing here, the psychology of asking the right questions in the right way, closing the loop, sharing results with people, giving them the proper incentives. That is something that is applied not to cold traffic. So that's the limitation here. Although I have done it, it does work. That's not its primary goal. Its primary goal is bringing people in who have signed up for your webinar that's bringing people into your orbit or people that you already have a relationship and strengthen it. Keep your customers forever. That's my motto. That's my podcast. And you use this technique to get people to focus on you and only you. We started in the webinar at stage one because it's just been effective. It's, it's showing 41% higher show up rate. So it is effective there, but its primary use is in relationship building with an audience. Uh, with your own audience. So hope that answers uh, that question. Yep, that was good. Um, yep, keep going. Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Yes, please send it, uh, Leslie, any other questions you have, I'll, we'll, we'll tackle those as they come up. Uh, so for uh, stage seven, two months later, this is where you wanna be. You want your people to say, you're awesome, I trust you, what else can I buy from you? They're the ones that are marketing for you. And I've seen this over and over again, where now your audience becomes your marketers. So next time you want to do a webinar, there they are. They're the ones promoting for you. Of course, you can always do Facebook ads and, and do things the way you typically do. But now you have these people who are drawn to you. It's the most powerful method that I know of. It's also one of the simplest. And that's what I have been teaching for many, many years. And the decision a lot of gurus now are having to face is do they want to continue using what I call the moldy old predictable failing practices that are still found in their old online courses? Or do they want to use a data proven scientific 
psychology-based method. And guess what? The gurus are going for the science. They need to find something. Their numbers are not uh, as high as they used to be, not getting the conversions, and so they're looking around. So the same question uh, applies to you as well. I'd like for you to take two steps. One is to apply this, these principles, this notion. You'll get a replay of this uh, video. Watch it again. Uh, take screenshots if you wish. Apply this sort of uh, methodology uh, and mindsets to your own webinars. And I think you're going to get uh, the same sorts of results, more people in, more engagement. The second step I'd like for you to do is let me teach you a little, nine, I call it the quick start. It's a 90 minute uh, set of explaining the whole techniques, basically. It's uh, easy to apply. I'm gonna walk you through, say here's the questions to ask, here's when to ask them, and here's the results that you would give your audience. And I call this uh, the master class to get you these sorts of outcomes. The outcomes you need, the ones that we just talked about, right? How to get attention, at stage one, how to get people to anticipate, show up for your webinars, how to get them to engage with you and stay on your webinar. So this masterclass, I call it the Sideways Survey Masterclass, starts off with this 90 minute quick start. And the goal of it is to get what I promise, 41% higher show up rates, which is what the data says, and 22% higher engagement, fewer people unsubscribing, more people focused on you. And that's what it's all about. And what the quick start can do is bring more people in the door, get them to stay in their seats long enough so that you can explain to them what it is your solution is, your unique solution technique, the thing that you have spent your lifetime working on with all your experience, you have something that could help them. And if it doesn't, if they don't buy your stuff, to keep them focused on you forever. That's why I said keep your customers forever, or at least long enough that you can figure out what else you can help them with. And that's what the Sideways Survey Masterclass is all about. It's used in webinars, of course, that's what we're describing here, online webinars, I'm sorry, live webinars, evergreen webinars. But folks who have taken the Masterclass have also applied it to their launches to bring in a, a huge audience, They've put it, uh, applied it to their online summits. They've applied it to their membership sites, even to their email communication, just in the messaging that they give their audience. They have funnels set up. They just in their usual email communication to be able to ask the right question in the right way so that the results will be interpretable and meaningful and then be able to close the loop and share the results. And what they're finding over and over again, it's all about engagement. They're getting more people to open their emails and act on what they see. It can also be used in live experiences. That's actually where Sideways Survey, the method was actually created uh, at a conference in 1998, I think, 97, 98. It was in Madison, Wisconsin here in the US. It was called uh, Distance Teaching and Learn. That's how long ago this conference was. It was called Distance teaching back then, not online learning. But it works very well in a live event. If you can imagine asking the right questions, people responding, and then you sharing the results to keep people engaged, let people know where they stand relative to others, extract from them, why are you here? What would make this training most effective for you? It's so powerful, can be used in live events as well as in online events. So the quick start is just that, in 90 minutes, what I can do is share with you the exact questions to ask your audience. These are templates that have been used forever, well, as long as I've been around, and refined. I told you I administered about 7,000 surveys to 550 organizations. This is where it comes from. Repeated, repeated, repeated applying of questions to see which ones are most effective. I'll give you those templates and then explain the sequence to you. When do you ask these questions? So the questions are asking the right questions in the right way at the right time. That's what the sequence is all about. And then how do you respond to your people? How do you share? What portion of those results would you share with folks? You don't share all of it, of course, but there are some targeted uh, results that you wanna share with your audience to demonstrate that their voice was heard and that what they said made a difference. So in terms of the questions, I have names for these templates. I call it the getting to know you, the identity, the results and impact. 
Uh, so there's different names for these, but I'm going to show you, give you the actual templates, the questions that you can use and ask of your audience as well. And then I'll explain to you the sequence. I have names for these as well. We call them the insight survey and the landing survey and discovery. And uh, that's not meaningful right now, but there are uh, a stage that you would take people through. As we talk stage one through stage seven of your webinar, there's actually a sequence of questions you would ask your audience to keep them focused on you to build that trust so they stay with you forever. And finally, I'll give you the responses. I'll, you know, you just, it's just bite-sized chunks. Here's some nuggets. You saw it in the training. That was the whole purpose of having you fill out those questions before this webinar so you could see the results. That's an example of what you would be uh, sending your own audience, just bite-sized nuggets, the most impactful results possible. I'll give you the exact messaging that I sent out. I'm saying, this is what I send my audience. And this is what I do for students in the masterclass. Just did it today to a, a folks from Evolution of Medicine. They're sending out a, an email. You say, here's, here's the message. Here's how you do it. And they're able to get so many more, uh, so, so much higher open rates and opt-in rates. So that's what the quick start is all about. It's all you need, 90 minutes, the questions, the sequence, the response. Uh, but in addition to that, you know, I'm a psychologist. It, it's important to me to know why this stuff works. And it all comes from the theory, it all comes from what I call the nine principles. So sideways survey itself, this technique, is firmly rooted in these principles. So in addition to the quick start, once you finish that, you could just apply that and away you go. I'd really like for you to stick around though and learn the why behind that. The reason being that you will then know how to modify your own questions that you ask of your audience. You'll be able to be informed when you do some modifications, what's a good modification and what's not. So I go through all nine principles also in the master class. So principle one is purpose. How to ask questions that have a single purpose, how to choose the right criteria. We're gonna go through that in the master class. And then we'll talk about how to ask the right questions in the right way. I didn't fill in the box because this slide got kind of busy. Principle three is all about the timing. You wanna ask questions when it matters. Don't wait till the end of an event. We call that the autopsy approach. So many people do that, they wait till an event is over and then ask for feedback. Nobody's gonna fill it in because it doesn't matter to them. So we're gonna go through the steps of how to ask when it's important, how often to ask your people. It's all based in the psychology that works. We're gonna go through principle four about ownership, principle five, which is about closing the loop. That's sharing the results. That's a big part of what we've talked about today. We'll talk about principle six, which is the incentives. There are some incentives that people use most frequently that do not work. They have not worked for years. We've done surveys of these certain incentives uh, mostly lotteries and things of that sort that utterly fail. You want to give people internal incentives, things that are meaningful to them, things that on an individual level are meaningful. We'll talk about that in the master class. We'll talk about training your respondents, principle seven. We all just assume that everybody knows how to give good feedback. Guess what? They don't. But you can train your people to give you meaningful, interpretable, actionable feedback. I'll show you how. Then we'll talk about reporting, how to get the results that are at a glance that you can act on quickly, and finally, different ways of delivering your questions to your audience. So when you put that all together, I call that the, the nine principles. And when you've taken the quick start in 90 minutes, you've done the principles, congratulations. You're gonna get the outcomes that you need, the results you want, the same results everybody else gets higher show up rates, more participation, people focusing on you, waiting for you to ask that next question. How strange is that? People have asked me like, when do I get that next survey? Nobody asks that. Everybody hates surveys, right? Not if you do them correctly, because it's their opportunity to help you and they realize it will help them directly. Not, hey, this will improve my products and services that might help me in the future, but it'll help them right now and you'll gain such deep understanding of your people, learn the insights that you need to know to keep your customers forever. That's what it's all about, at least to keep your best customers forever. And of course, this all leads to huge sales. 
So that's what the master class is about. That's the next step I'd like for you to take once you've applied the quick start. You can learn a little bit about the why and apply it. So uh, let me just, I know in this audience, we have a diverse group. I had already asked you what your superpower was, what you do, who you help, very broad. So I thought of my examples, I'd give you three that are also across the board, right? We have Dr. Westland, she's from Sweden. Uh, she's an animal behavior scientist. She works with veterinarians. I've seen videos of her teaching a chicken to dance. She can make a chicken do a pirouette in about 60 seconds with a clicker. It's really amazing. But she does a lot of webinars. She took the master class, applied the quick start, 52% higher attendance rate on her next webinar. That's how effective it was for her. Charles Bird, he's a Silicon Valley uh, entrepreneur turned productivity guru, teaches people how to uh, get partners, how to get their word out to the world by partnering up with, uh, with JV partners. He has used this for his webinar, first time used 40% increase in attendance. Gabe Hoffman, he's a guy who just spoke about evolution in medicine. He bought the master class for his whole team, and now they apply it to their messaging in their membership sites in their uh, two online courses they teach. He, to him, it's like a philosophy. He wants everyone to use his approach in all their communication with their audience. It makes it so consistent, and it's what's responsible for so much of their uh, increased sales as well. So that's what the master class is about. Um, you know, when you do these webinars, they always say, hey, if you'll join this, we'll give you a bonus. And some of these bonuses are like not even relevant anymore. They're just like stacking bonuses upon bonuses. But I picked two that are, I think, critical. These are things that everyone should be doing anyway. They should be taking anyway, but especially where you are now. One of them I call the dangerous surveys training. And I've taught this for a long time. I tell people to avoid the traps in your online survey tools. If you're using SurveyMonkey, SurveyGizmo, Typeform, there's a, any of them, there's like 85 different web-based survey tools. If you use their templates and their recommended uh, questions, you're gonna lose data. You're gonna get less meaningful responses. Well, that's kind of crazy, right? Why would they do that? They don't know. These tools, and I know the people behind some of these because I knew the guys back in the 1990s, they're, they're not psychologists, they're not psychometricians, they're not survey experts, they're programmers. And they've built a terrific tool that can bring data in and data out. But if you use their guidelines, you will automatically be, well, that's why I call them traps. If you use like the default settings, you'll be turning, you'll be reducing your response rate over and over again. And in this training, I show you how to avoid these traps and what alternatives to use instead. This is a course, you can find the same course on Thinkific. There's an old version on Udemy. They don't ever seem to, <laughs> they won't let me take it down. Uh, it's on Udemy now. I had about 1,600 students enroll. Excuse me, one moment. <clears throat> Sorry, talking for nearly uh, 50 minutes, my voice went out. But if you'll sign up for the master class, you can have this course for free. I think it's essential if you use any kind of web-based survey tools to know what the traps are built into those tools. Very easy to sidestep, but when you do, you'll find your response rates go up and the results you get much more meaningful. And a second bonus, something I'm very proud of, this has been pretty much a life's work. As I said before, I've reviewed and critiqued about 7,000 surveys over the past 25 years. I can literally count on two hands the number of those surveys that I said, yes, this is an excellent survey. It, they just aren't. And you know this, right? Because you get surveys all the time and you're like, wow, that was annoying and that was a bad survey. That's just how it is. Creating a survey is a special skill and most people don't have that skill. So. This is something I, don't, I no longer do except to my paid clients, is I review their surveys and critique them, show them, change this question, here's the wording that you want. I used to, excuse me, I used to do this for a, um, a service I called Fix My Survey. 
I don't do that anymore. I, I don't have time, but I, I used to offer that same thing to point out to people where their surveys were failing. So what I've done instead is I've created this 25 point uh, diagnostic. It's actually the checklist that I use for my high paid clients that you can just put next to your survey, go through it, it says, does your survey have this? Check. Did you do this? No, fail. And you can go through and you can see at a glance where your survey will be successful or not. Very powerful. It will give you an assessment right away to let you know if you're going to be getting the kind of response rate that you want based on how much time you've put into your survey. So this I'd also like to give to you for free if you sign up for the masterclass. I ask that you uh, not share it. It's you know, it's, it is intellectual property. It's, it's for people that are in the masterclass, but it's going to be so helpful to use this for your own surveys and assessments and anything you've used to see how they compare to the checklist. So that's what I, uh, what I have to offer you tonight. Of course, the question is, you know, how much is all this for the, the nine principles training and the quick start and what I'm calling the dangerous surveys course and the 25 point diagnostic tool. I didn't put a price next to this because it's unique. I don't know anything else out there like that. Uh, the course itself is just $597 US. That's not 597 a month. That's one time, lifetime, $597. Go to sidewayssurvey.com slash today. That's where you can register for the masterclass get the training, the quick start, which is what you might need now, save the principles to learn why things work, and then I will send you the dangerous survey course so you can make sure you don't make the same mistakes others have made with their surveys, and then you'll get the diagnostic tool as well. And when you go to sidewayssurvey.com slash today, uh, you won't see 597 because you're here, you've taken the time to watch, I would call it like the hurricane special or something silly like that, but it's not really. Because you're here, I'm going to take $200 off the price just for $397 US dollars now. Go to sidewayssurvey.com slash today and sign up for the masterclass. It's $200 off. I have to say at, at this price at $397, um, I don't offer a 30-day money back guarantee. Uh, but I do offer what I call my 28 year money back guarantee. <clears throat> and that's a little outrageous, I know, but in, in my world that makes sense. I've been teaching for 28 years. I plan on teaching another 28 years, God willing. So I'm here. <laughs> so if at any time in the next 28 years, you don't feel that you got your uh, value worth uh, out of this, just uh, let me know. I don't know what that would be, like the year 2046. I don't know what currency we'll be using in 2046, maybe uh, you know, cryptocurrency or intergalactic space credits or something, but don't worry, I will convert that <laughs> back to your dollars and uh, get that back to you next day, uh, no hassle, because that's how I feel as a teacher. I've been teaching 28 years. So my students from years ago still contact me. They still want letters of recommendation. They've changed careers. They want to get a letter. They want an introduction. To me, it's just a lifetime thing as a teacher at the university teaching and training organizations. So I make that offer to you as well. If you'll purchase the Sideways Survey Masterclass with that uh, URL, you have 28 years to make up your mind whether it was worth it. Hey, Matt, I have a question. Sure. When does, is there certain dates for the class? And if so, it, does everyone start at the same time? And, and um, basically, is there a start date and specific timing around it? Or can, is it choose your own time frame for completing it? Yes, it's, um, I set it up for, you know, for all sorts of, you, you know, those that like to just jump right in and, you know, tackle it and those that like to sit and wait. So what I've done with the class is I've made a, I made the quick start is available right now. So if you register today, the quick start is sitting there waiting for you. And then I put in, I think three or four of the principles 
are there. And then I plan to, to drip out the others because it is meant to be kind of sequential, but I know some people like to just get started. So it's there and available for you today. Um, the course itself, this offer is good till Sunday because on the following Monday, I do this in terms of cohorts. So about once a month, sometimes every other month, uh, we have a new cohort. And this is important because the master class itself has, like these people that you see in front of you, it brings in what's worked for them and even what's not worked for them. It's an ongoing course where you not only get the training, but I'm bringing in uh, real life case studies of those that have used it before you. So I'm taking what's worked for them, sharing it with you, and now you'll be applying this in your own webinars and summits and training and your email communication. And then I'm gonna take what's worked for you and we're gonna keep sharing that. So it's an ongoing course. That's why I do this in cohorts and have a, you know, a soft close date on this. So to join the master class, that's, uh, I guess I did not put a, a date on there, but it would be this Sunday it would be the close and then we'll start class officially Monday. There's no live meetings like you have to attend, but you'll be in, the, uh, in that, uh, that cohort where we're all actively learning together. Awesome. <laughs> um, earlier, John asked, uh, can you give us a relationship story? I'm not quite sure what he's referring to. Um, John, if you wanna chat, um, yeah, I've bit. got lots of stories to tell. So if John's able to <laughs> clarify exactly uh, what that is, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely share a story. Uh, some people here that have taken the, the master class, some of these you might look familiar. Uh, I don't know if my cursor's working here. It's Jeff Brown, the Read to Lead podcast, award-winning podcaster. He applied a uh, sideways survey to his mastermind. Sean Platt, uh, him and his two co-authors have written more than 100 books. They teach authors how to make, uh, how to market their books. They applied Sideways Survey to their uh, summit, to their live event. And I'm, I'm on his podcast to, to talk about that. They had amazing results. Mike Kim, the influencer extraordinaire, applied it to his uh, live presentations. Joy Caps over here, if you need a copywriter, this is the person, she's applied uh, Sideways Survey to her own uh, audience, to her own email communication as well, very effectively. Uh, most of you probably know this fella here, uh, Tom Pohl. I met Tom uh, in a mastermind a couple of years ago, and he had made that quote. I'm just going to put that quote back up. Some of you might have missed it <clears throat> if you joined us late, but it's worth showing it uh, a second time, what Tom had to say about sideways survey, the process itself. So Tom is a big fan. I'm a big fan of Leadsology. I've been, I bought his course, I've bought his books. Uh, so that's why he's, he's uh, promoting this uh, practice as well. There's a couple other folks, I just wanna point them out. Again, sidewayssurvey.com slash today is where you wanna go uh, to register for the masterclass. But let me just finish up with, with two other folks that have, used, have taken the masterclass who have applied these same principles Dr. Brenton, Jennifer Brenton, is an OBGYN by day, and I guess when she's not on call, she does online marketing. She knows more about online marketing than anybody I've ever met, and she didn't know about Sideways Survey, and when she saw the method in action on her own online summit, that's when she became a real fan. She called it the After, sum after Summit Echo, after she applied the principles from the masterclass to her summit, just kept getting people to come back and stick around. She called it the echo. And finally, uh, Ray Edwards. If you don't know Ray, you need to know Ray. I love Ray, I love his message. He's the copywriting guru. I don't know, he's the guy that writes copy for Frank Kern, for Jeff Walker, for Tony Robbins, uh, Victor Mark Hansen. Uh, I know I'm missing a bunch of folks, but those are the folks that he calls friends. He plays at that level. And I applied sideways survey at his live event. And he just, it was amazed. He uh, had me talk to his inner circle folks. He's been promoting it uh, because it just works. He was, he's skeptical of anything that says survey in it, which we all should be. And I understand that, 
but using this method of asking the right questions in the right way, sharing the right results back to your people to demonstrate their voice was heard, what they said made a difference, how they compare to others is just magical. It was magical at his event. I was there personally to witness it. And now he is a huge uh, promoter as well. So when you go to sidewayssurvey.com slash today, uh, you'll see a page that looks like this. Yeah, so that's what's missing is a slash today. When you go there, you'll see the 397, not the 597. You simply put in your name and email. I don't know how this works. I don't know. You don't even have to put in a physical address. It's done through Stripe. There's some magic uh, thing going on there. But by just putting your name and email and your credit card information, it will say pay just 397. And once you do that, you'll see a page that looks like this. This is the confirmation page but it will give you the private class link. You'll go to that link. It's, this is held on Thinkific. And like any of the hundreds of learning platforms out there, you do still have to enroll with them. They still wanna know your name and uh, have you set up a password. There's no way to, to get around that. But there is a way to get around the payment. And that's what you'll see in your confirmation instructions. Go to that link and you'll be given a uh, coupon code that's your ticket out. So they'll be asking you for 597, you just put in that coupon code and you're in. You've already paid 397 and you can join the class immediately. So that's what the master class is all about. Leslie, I'm happy to, to uh, take some other questions. I, I should have pointed out that I call this the everlasting training. Um, <laughs> that is, it's just, it's, it's always going to be there. I want you to do the 90 minute quick start just so you can start applying it. Learn the principles when you have time. But I'm going to keep emailing you every week, every time something new comes in there, it's going to be there. It's going to be the best advice I can offer. It's going to be an ongoing source of learning. What I hear from others that have worked, I'm going to, I'm going to share that. Stuff that didn't work so well, we're going to share that as well. Give you all the case studies. So it's just going to be there. That's why I say there's a 28 year guarantee because I plan on this being the source of where I put all my very best advice and I want you to be a part of that as well. Um, there's one final question that um, you could probably ask or answer, <laughs> not ask, sure. but um, someone was saying, I already survey my customers and how much does this add to that if they're already, you know, have a process in place for surveying their customers and their, their leads for that matter. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give some tough love here. This is, uh, this is me, <laughs> but, but it's, it's based on having done this. I, I've reviewed and critiqued more than 7,000 surveys. And as I said, very, very, very few pass the test. It's just, it's writing a skill is it's a skill. And most people ask questions and then they get the results and then they act on them. Here's the danger though, and I see this all the time, I've seen this for an entire career, is people will come up with some questions, they'll send it out, maybe as a survey or a poll or something, they'll get 10 or 15% of people to respond, and then they'll act on it. And I say, what are you doing? Well, it's all the data I have. My response to that is, that is not representative of your audience. If I went to a, I don't know, a faculty member at a university and said, hey, professor, um, I just surveyed your students in your class and here you go, 15% of them responded. I thought you'd like the results. She'd throw them in the garbage. She'd say, this doesn't represent, th this is the extremes. This is probably people who really enjoyed my class and really hated it. What about the 85% that are in the middle? That's who I wanna hear from. And she's absolutely right. That's who you need to hear from. But nobody does because we all get 5 or 10, 15, maybe 20% of people to respond, then we act on it. And we're not acting on truth. We're acting on the people who filled it out. And I've done this over and over for years, looked, examined the people who are silent, what they have to say, very different from the people who responded. So that's part of the training is showing you how to ask the right questions in the right way so you can get a high response rate. When I do surveys, I'm expecting 80% to fill it out. If I get 50%, I don't use it. 
If I get 60, I'm really upset with myself. I must have done something wrong that people didn't want to fill this out. Now, of course, I'm surveying people I have a relationship with, but you need to have their results need to be representative of your audience. If not, you're just acting on misinformation. So my long-winded response is it's excellent that people are asking their customers. Where it falls apart is are those responses representative of your people in general, or are you just hearing from the extremes? And sadly, in most cases, you're hearing from the extremes. So I'll teach you some ways around that. You know, one last thought about everything, and that's the reason I'm doing this is, you know, what I said earlier, you have a mission, you have something to tell the world, you have something unique to you based on your experience and your knowledge, and, and you want to get this out to the world, right? To see if it's something that could help them. You have a problem that you can solve. But we use these tactics that everybody else is using that just smothers the message. Nobody hears us because we're all doing the same thing. So I'd like for you to take the masterclass to learn some of the techniques, some of the psychology to remove this blanket, I think, from your message. This is the way things are gonna proceed. I don't know in three years if everyone's gonna be using sideways survey, but they're gonna be using something like it. They're gonna be using good psychology, scientific practice. They're not gonna be using the moldy old predictable tactics. The gurus themselves are piling in, looking at psychologists and the science. So you could wait three years for all the gurus to use a technique like sideways survey, and then they'll teach you about it in three years and tell you about the results, or you can just cut in line now and learn it. Uh, that's how I feel. I wasn't there for the gold rush of online marketing. Uh, I missed it. You know, I also didn't buy Amazon stock when it was four bucks, and you know, I, I'm always seem to be late to the party, but not now. This, I think, is early to the party. These are techniques that have worked for years and years in other industries. They're new to online marketing. You can put them into place to replace these tactics that everybody else is using that are becoming less and less effective over time. So I'll leave you with that. Uh, Leslie, is there any other questions I can answer before we end for um, the evening? Just one question uh, specifically about missing the beginning from Paul, and he asks about the if there's going to be a replay. Yes, absolutely. Um, Mike, it's, what, uh, what time is it here? It's about 8 p.m. Atlanta time. So don't know if that's going to happen tonight, but first thing tomorrow. So maybe in about uh, six, 14, 16 hours, check your email. We'll send you uh, the compiled replay of this take some screenshots of it, learn all you can from the technique, and then I hope you'll take the next step and, and sign up for the masterclass where I give you the very specifics, the templates that you can just apply uh, to your own audiences as well. Awesome, thank you. All right, I think that's all I had for today. Hope that was, that was helpful. Uh, check out the replay, and uh, my, uh, my appreciation uh, to, uh, Tom for introducing us and I hope we'll uh, continue to, to keep in touch. And of course, I will continue to keep the survey conversation going with you as well to share results, to continue to demonstrate uh, this methodology with you as well. So have a great night, a great morning, wherever you are in the world, and uh, we'll see you next time.